I want to talk about real turquoise versus fake turquoise. Later on, I'm going to discuss the difference between stabilized turquoise versus color enhanced and also reconstituted. First off, fake turquoise. Um, oftentimes you see on the market, it is brilliant blue with nice veins. Most often it is dyed howlite. And there's nothing wrong with dyed howlite because howlite has um, healing properties, energy properties that are very popular with Mala bracelet jewelry making. The only thing is if you're thinking you're buying turquoise and it turns out to be howlite, that's not good. Uh, howlite is a borate mineral that is chalky and naturally white with brown veins. In this case, and usually when you crack it open, it is white on the outside, uh, inside, and blue on the outside. And in this case, it isn't even that. So I think this has been reconstituted and then the brown dye is put in afterwards and you see through the, the hole of the bead, it's brown in the dye. Um, so that's an obvious red flag right there. Same thing with, now this is a 6mm version. So quite often also they would make a powderized form, dye it, and then reconstitute it so that, and, and put it together in a resin so that it's blue throughout. Um, whereas in real turquoise, so, and turquoise happens to be a soft uh, stone that is somewhat waxy and it's opaque and it breaks shatters very easily. Only about 12 to eight, 12 to 20% of turquoise is hard enough um, to be cut and more to be cut without being shattered and put into jewelry. Anyway, here I did I fell from a meter and a half. I was reaching out and this shattered. I'm going to crack it open further to show you. It, you see, that broke much more easily than this. And it is blue throughout. And you'll see that quite often, as it is here, the shattering is long or breaks the natural break was along the where the veins are, the matrix, sometimes it's called matrix, where the spidery veins, um, there, so there's weakness there. That's one way of telling that there's no dye process. You crack it open and it's through throughout. Um, and at the rate in which how hard it is to, to break open is another good tell. So I know for sure, and I also, it's really important to know where you're getting your turquoise from. Um, and that's older turquoise I've had for a long time. And I know where it's from. So I know that is also real and it breaks in a, in a strange pattern. So now, I want to talk about the difference between why sometimes there's green and blue. Blue turquoise, it really has more um, copper. How turquoise is formed is through water that is running through rocks and over time, the sediments it, it, and it, with pressure it turns into rock. The reason why it is blue is it has more copper, 
and green has more iron. So it depends on the mine and the geographic location. And certain mines have, they produce turquoise that has more veins. Whether or not um, it is more expensive because of veins and no veins, it, the veining has little less to do with it. And the more rare it is, yes, the more expensive it is. Whether or not it has veins, it's a matter of personal preference. So for instance, these are really nice pendants and I like the dramatic veins. And also here now you see there's a there's a patch where they did not fill with resin and it, it was a natural crack. Quite often they'll fill it, um, but the veins, it, it, it's all a matter of preference. And some of the mines, like Sleeping Beauty, which most of the mines actually in, in the US no longer produce, they've been mined out and they, they no longer produce turquoise. And it's more blue with less veining. So it really depends um, what the market wants and what as a designer you want. So here, actually, I don't know whether or not, this is an old piece I found somewhere. I don't remember whom I bought this from. And I see, this is another thing that worries me. It looks like surface dye that perhaps it's how light or, or is color enhanced because it is whiter just below surface where it's scratched, um, where the edges that have been rubbing is a lot whiter than the other areas. So let's crack this open. It pains me that this is such a beautiful bead, but for the sake of this video, Ha, huh. that's interesting. There you go. This is pretty much, it looks like is actually made of clay, some sort of clay bead or brown. And then it's dyed. You see the, the surface, the, the inside that's been dyed also. So sometimes the best way is to be able to crack that, crack them open. And here's one, and I, this is another one I don't remember where I bought the, bought it from, but this has more green and veins. And it cracked along most of the vein. So that gives you an idea. And I would say from the way it breaks, it is not the same as the powder form. It goes in in flakes. Um, so I would be more inclined to to believe that that is real. Um, the fact that also it's very shiny and polished on the outside um, and chalky on the inside, chalkier, tells me that likely that has been stabilized. And what Stabilize means is they, because of the veins and it breaks easily, usually they do that with lower grade turquoise. They put resin, plastic resin around and put pressure to force into all the crevices and cracks. And that kind of binds it together. And they call that stabilized. Now, if it is then also color enhanced, they, the seller should say it's color enhanced. So sometimes say if they had something that was more, uh, more pale and they want a more vibrant blue and they can color enhance that. So quite often you see this is, I know that this is natural turquoise. It comes out and it's raw and it is pale and somewhat chalky. These are bits that are perhaps left over, but big enough so that it's worth the while to drill. Um, I'm gonna crack one of these beads. It's pretty much the same color inside and out, and they didn't color enhance um, this. That gives you an idea. Okay, 
so I want to talk about now this pains me because they're so beautiful and I know it's natural um this I got from an Arizona dealer that specialized in turquoise it's really beautiful uh but this bead there's a little drill hole that isn't perfect so I'm going to crack it open for us all to see oops here you go see how beautiful that is on the inside and I love this color and again it breaks in 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 that that way okay so um let's talk about reconstituted so reconstituted much like now quartz countertops that you know it's engineered they take so these are too small these bits are too small to to drill to make little beads out of and the leftover what they do is they put it together with resin clear epoxy and sometimes they might color it depending on whether or not you want more accent but and also sometimes they'll, they'll crush this into a smaller bit if they don't want too much pattern showing and then what they do is they form it together into a block and then cut it thereafter or sometimes they'll put it in a mold but the smaller it is the, the easier it is for them to make a uniform pattern and you'll see a lot of nowadays uh, resin and epoxy art resin the property is exactly as turquoise the only thing is that um, it is engineered and basically broken down re reassembled and it should be a lot less expensive than natural large turquoise so there's that now i want it sometimes they call it african turquoise but it, it isn't so this is jasper and sometimes they'll have a lighter color it's got the the black black veining sometimes brown veins and they might um, put resin with a dye color diet. But African turquoise really is just jasper. Okay. So now I want turquoise is often found in the same vicinity as chrysocala, which has a teal peacock veining like this and um, it has similar properties and usually are around the same sort of mines see it's a really pretty stone but not to be mistaken for turquoise even though chrysocala is not cheap so there you have it next time um just just be aware and ask a few more questions if it's really too very inexpensive likelihood it's too good to be true often is